Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be one gnarly repair. You're going to talk to Jeff from Beat City's PDR. I'm not going to waste your time. Let's get cracking. You're about to meet Jeff McGill, who owns Beach City's PDR in Huntington Beach, California. Now, I've known Jeff personally in the PDR business for nearly 20 years. It's not often we get together, but when we do, it's always a fun discussion about dents and tools. You'll see this firsthand as I'm excited to share it with you. So welcome to my new series called PDR with Dent Masters. All right, what's going on, everybody? I'm here with uh, Jeff McGill at Beach City's PDR here in Huntington Beach. Jeff, thanks. I appreciate you letting me stop Absolutely. by and yep. check it out. We're going to be look, looking at a pretty nice, uh, some damage right there. So anyways, give, give some history about your, your place, man. How long have you been here? Oh, man, we moved in here back in uh, 06. Had the shop over on Beach Boulevard from 03 to 06. Moved in here. Uh, actually, next month is going to be 15 years. I remember coming to your open house. Dude, yeah, like you did. You came ago, here. Yeah, man. we got pictures of that. The place was totally different. Didn't have all the wood and all the stuff, and it was just kind of just in a, a white shop. Well, you got this notorious. Uh, every time I watch your Instagram, you're about to do a vehicle, dude. You you pull you back it in, or you pull it forward. You know, you pull it in. Um, so that's pretty cool. You got a lot of history here. Uh, everybody always asks about this picture I got up here on the wall. It's James Dean's last picture alive. And uh, my wife actually got me the picture when we moved into the shop, like a move-in present, you know. So uh, everyone always asks, what's the story? Is, you know, is that Dean Martin or what kind of car is that? You know, it's like, it's a, it's a 1955 Spider, 550 Spider. Uh, it's James Dean's last picture alive. And that picture was taken up in Culver City, apparently by George Barris. And uh, they filled up the car, put it on the trailer, which is on the wagon behind the car behind them. And they trailered it up to... Uh, Central California, and uh, probably about three or four hours, apparently, after this picture is when he died. And got they can't find wreck. the car, you said. And they don't, nobody knows where the car's at. It, you know, it got, got recycled, got towed out of that, got tow yard. Who knows where it went? Nobody knows where it's at. So it's That's a cool photo. And then there's a dent guy back there, yeah. right? Uh, he's, it looks, yeah, like, he's doing, it looks like he's doing a dent back there. Right? Yeah, so. going through the window. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to get right into your, your repair right here. Right, so, right. Uh, let's go take a look at it. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jeff, this, this, this doesn't look so, so, so easy, shall I say. So... Uh, I don't know if we're, how much we're going to film getting through this, but you sure. know, go ahead and set this up, man. Yeah, what, yeah. What so what we're going to do is we got a customer came in and he sideswiped the pole, the three-foot pole that everyone has, you know, yeah. that nobody can see it. Yeah. They don't make them high enough. So he hit the pole. You can see we got some braces involved right here where the glue's going through. We got a knuckle down here in the bottom with some tight crowns, probably even underneath the molding. And we got a top crown way up here at the top, which, which luckily it's nice and soft. We got a little bit of a crease right here, which would be the top of the pole. And we got the push in through the brace. So we got some brace lines sticking through, glue lines pushing through. Yeah. It's a little bit tight. We got good access through this entire area, totally open. And then from here, it's sealed up with the brace. And then from here up, it's all open for a tool. So we got plenty of good access. Okay. We can do some glue pulling right through the middle of that brace. So what tools are you going to be using? So I'm going to start out with these heavy tools from Ultra. These are 5 eighths. And uh, we're going to do some different tips. We're going to start with the red tip. Uh, maybe even move over to a 90. Yeah. I had Steve build right. me a little bit longer one. So, so you, we got got some, 90. you got some diameters going on in there. Oh, yeah. So, I, yeah. No flex on those. Stronger right? is better yeah. for quality. Yeah. Absolutely. And we might even move over to a, yeah, I got a 5 8 90. Yeah, you know and, uh, what, Jeff? I've been, I haven't been able to use these. I, are, I've, 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 I've been just getting those, man. I'm like, I, that's, but, yeah. These here, these are your crushers. These yeah. ones will take care of your damage. Yeah. And the reason I had these 90s made at 5 8 stick is so that I could use the flat big pushers. Because oh, yeah. when you put the put when you put them on a 55 degree, you can you're gonna you're gonna touch the edge of the tip. Yeah. The 90s, you're gonna touch the flat where you can get more surface area push. Yep. So that's why I had these ones made. And uh, anyway, so we're gonna go into some of those. <sighs> well, we can't forget about your. Uh, is it, don't you got a big Bertha around here somewhere that you like to use a lot? Too? Yeah, but that okay. So I have. Um, this is my old, this is my dent craft that I use quite a bit, but it doesn't have a replaceable tip, so I switched over to the ultras, which have the uh, replaceable tips. Yeah. But dude, this is a go-to, a go-to tool for finishing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, 
I, yeah. did, I don't use these as much as I'd like to, but I have these made over at uh, a, um, Ooh, you guys at Finesse like made these. One, yeah. And I had these custom made. And why and don't you use this as much? That looks like you know, I would these, use these almost good, every day. Yeah, these are good finishing tools. Are they and too I, long? No, they work. They just you don't. Re replaceable tips tools have, have have changed everything. Yeah, yeah. So I, I do use these, but not as much as I like. Um, I got this idea from the old Gorilla Bar at Dent Gear. Yeah, And I still yeah. use this on a regular basis. This Gorilla piece. Bar, that's what they call it. I yeah. was like, remember the name and I couldn't remember it. This thing is, this is the old one. From This one, this one's about 25 years old. Uh, the new ones look like yeah. this. Yeah. Here's the old one, here's the new one. A little bit different design, a little bit smaller. Yeah. But uh, these, these ones have, actually have the push marks in them from where they bent them. <laughs> but these ones here are CNC machine, uh, machine from Chrome. Yeah. But this that's one, a, yeah. That's, that's thin up there, man. But these are thick, these are strong, they do not flex. You can't find that one anymore, dude. I, I don't see yeah, it so anymore. Dent Gear, that, Dent, not that particular one. So Dent Gear went out of business, uh -huh. sold it to his dad, and then uh, it's kind of shut down. All the leftover tools went to Dentcraft. On their, ah. on their, if you go to their website, you can go down to the left on their menu and you can find uh, old uh, uh, dent gear stuff. Old dent gear tools that are new and they're new, but they're old. They're, they're all leftover. They're, they're all leftover stock. And uh, if they're out, they're out. They're not making any more. So these might be available yeah. anymore. I'm not sure. And there is one more longer one too. I had one built, so I do have a long one too. Yeah, those are Jeff's always been about the big rods, big pushes. So, yeah, yeah. We're gonna massive, we're gonna see it in action. This is about one of the best blending hammers I've ever had, especially if you're doing hail, blending rails out. This thing is amazing. It's super light. You switch the tip in the backside to a soft tip, whatever tip you want. It's got a plastic. Yeah, I'd that say thing plastic. Seems like it lasts a long time. This thing has lasted a long time. Never even worn out. This is the longest lasting tip I've ever had, and it, I can't take it off. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Then, yeah, all right? it's just part of the stick. If it did, you'd probably lose it. Actually, you could take it off. There's actually an Allen head inside here, uh -huh. but this is not a replaceable tip, so you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. only this side is. Yeah. So yeah, great, great tool. And then it came with the uh, the ball in the back, but ergonomically, it fits better in your hand, in the palm of your hand, to do this than it does to do. With it like that, now you get you're, you're way more comfortable. Uh, way more comfortable to yeah. use your this, wrist. Doesn't that feel good? They're like yeah, those way more yeah. comfortable. All right, what is, what is, what is, I I have these, and then you just showed me a big like way Tutorial. to use these. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So this is my. I don't have no specific name for these, but this is my edge tool. I use this for light crowns or dented edges, yeah. especially on. I actually designed this. I had the idea of using it when I was out on a hail trip, and I had. Dents on my rail, and the edges were barely pushed out. And uh, what it, you can do is you can slip this down inside the corner, up on the rail. Want to go up here? Yeah, I, can, I can see right here. Yeah. And you can, if you got a dent right here on your edge, you got the edge pushed out. You can now get this edge down inside the corner to push that out. It works uh -huh. amazing. You can just push this dent straight out. So that just basically. Right. That basically. Moves that metal up. Right, and with this little cutout, right, this is a wide, this is a wide gutter right here, but this cutout is for basically cars, but you can uh, get that right down inside there deep and push that edge out and pop that right out. Interesting. Very Works good. really, really good. You can use it on this edge. You can get slip this right in behind the molding without having to take the molding off, and bam, you push it out. You can, you can use it like this, right down deep. You can turn it around. You can use the edge like that if you need to as a 90 degree corner. It will not work on that side. It'll only work on this side, but there's no, there's no gutter. Also, it works on, might be better to do it here. If you have your edge pushed in, if you have your edge pushed in, you can push this way with a hammer on the back side. Yeah. Or you can turn it around, you can push on the inside of the seam line right here, push it out. Works amazing. Yeah, that's what I could have used that. A right, this go. works really, really good. And the tip is rounded, so you can actually get a perfect tip right in the middle. Or if you need to rock it a little bit, you can rock it. So you can push it right in the middle, or you can rock it a little bit to kind of make sure you get both sides of the of the dent. Wow, 
That's really good. Really versatile knockdown tool that I've, 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 I've made this years and years ago and I finally had Steve make me some. You can get these on ultra dent tools. And there's also a couple other versions. <clears throat> I've got the uh, smaller version of it. Yeah. Okay. And I've also got just a regular edge tool with a little longer uh, cutout in it. So you can use this in a spot where if you need to get around a door handle and hit an edge, you can push it like this. Hold on, let me get that thing. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh -huh. Or if you want to, if you got a, if you got a dent up here on the top of the uh, seam line, up by the, up by the uh, window seam or windowsill, yep. you can now push right up against that corner of the molding. And yep. you can rock it this way and hit the whole corner. So any, any edges, like the, those seams right. where you wouldn't be able to get anything. Right. There. You can get it right in there now. Because a traditional round tool, I mean, you can kind of hit it. It's going to dig into it. But it's going to dig into it. You're going to hit a corner. Now you've got a nice rounded smooth spot and you can touch it. Nice. Or you can, it works better like this. Now you got a flat spot. I'll touch a lot more surface area. And then I got my big round knockdown. I use this for, I use this for blending. Actually, it's better for little sharper high spots, like the ones we have down here in this door. Yeah. And it's just a good overall big, thick, heavy tool you can use with a hammer. And you can just knock down some good stuff with that thing. That's Super solid. That's this thing's, I've, I haven't touched this in a long time. It barely wears out. It's really good. One. Yeah, oh, this is really, really good. Well, that's awesome. Jeff, thanks for sharing with that. Yeah. So, All right, Jeff. So what, what's cracking? What are you going to be doing now, right. dude? We're going to start big. We're just going to... We're gonna use this 55, uh, was it about 40, 42 inch tool? Yeah. Five eighths thick yeah. and uh, there's no flex in this thing and we're gonna start pushing. I'm gonna start pushing right down in here on this body line. Okay. See if I can release some of the tension All right. and see what we get from that. Got a lot of flex in there. And where are you starting at pushing up? Right now, I'm looking for my tool. I'm right about here. I'm okay. going to go straight down into this body line. Okay. And then see if I can push down inside the uh, push down to the other side of that crease. So I need to replace my tip, my cap. The cap is thin. All right. So we got a new cap on here. We're going to start pushing a little bit. I'm just going to kind of ease it up. So I don't want it to boink out and crack. And it looks like the paint's already kind of. I haven't even really pushed on it, but the paint's kind of tight and you see some wobbles Sorry. in the paint down there. Yeah, you're good. There, the edge is starting to come out right now. Get a little bit above the edge, get some of that tension out of there. Now I'm curious, you don't, do you use heat or you don't want to use heat? Uh, or sometimes I do, or? I don't, um, cause I'm, I'm like you too, sometimes I don't use heat. Yeah, I'm not, I've, I'm not totally into heat a whole lot because I mean it's all about the tight if this was any more tight I would definitely use some heat but yeah this is this is not that bad so I'm gonna push out part of that lower I pushed out the, this body line a little bit yeah I'm not gonna push any more than that I'm gonna go work over here and get some of that out okay I'm gonna try to try to bring this dent up all evenly as possible uh, evenly as I possibly can because I don't want to bring up one area sooner than another I'm just gonna go right at the middle of that crease, or that, that line. We'll change that, and I'm gonna go up the middle of this. Soft pushes, I don't wanna over push, create a bunch of high spots. I'm gonna get some naturally, but I just wanna bring it up even. I don't wanna bring it up high. So now what's happening is now that I'm bringing up both sides, now I'm bringing up my high spot, which is my, yeah. where this thing is pinched. I'm going to be able to go back and hit that down pretty soon. Yeah, because you're bringing metal back over to that crown so, right. so you can release, right? Exactly. And then see how high my tool, my tool goes. So my tool is going to go all the way up to here, and then the brace is from here up. So I can touch a lot of this. And some of it. There's some, there's, we got some glue right here. So and there's a free spot, so I'm going, to, I'm going to slide my tool up in here if I can. Over here a lot. 
you guys are a lot anything like me, I bounce around a lot through my day. Yeah, yeah. Are you ju and you're just kind of exploring a little bit too, as well, or right. just trying I'm to a, see what's, what's going to give you? you exactly. Know? I'm exploring the dent, looking for my soft spots. Anything that's going to move easy, I'm going to go ahead and push that out. Yeah. Bring it up a little bit, not too high. Yeah. I'm also right now the way I'm using my tools, I'm using it this way. Yeah. Okay. Side loading a little I'm bit. Side loading exactly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm going to grab onto one side of my handle and nice. close the twist at the same time. So how are you doing that again? You were saying. So I'm going to I'm going to push and twist with my thumb at the yeah. same time. Yeah. I'm going to push the side of my tool right here, just like that. Okay. And I'm doing that right now on this. Yeah, you're trying to go for that little yep, and getting rid secondary of this, dent getting there. Rid of, huh? Yep, getting rid of some of this crown right here, or this crease. I'm going to have to switch tools here, just yeah. get a little bit. What are you doing here, man? So this was, I think one of uh, Steve at Ultra, this is one of his older uh, tool extensions, yeah. which I really like. It's adjustable. You can kind of, you can put it off to the side a little bit, make it longer on one side or the other, and it just bolts right up to your handles. Yeah, that, dude. You know, yeah. you can switch it and take it off, put it on whatever tool you want to use. Bada bing, bada bing. You're good yeah. to go. So it adds huge leverage, basically. Oh my gosh, I can sit yeah. there and just crank on something. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing what leverage can do for a tool uh, and then and the, then the push, too, as well. I mean, it just makes it way more comfortable. Yeah, but also, the good thing about this particular extension yeah. is it also works with, by coincidence, it works with... Some of the A1 stuff. Oh yeah. It'll, oh yeah. It'll fit in there too. By coincidence, it happens to fit. Yeah. And it works great. Anything with those open hole, open yeah. hole accent. It happens uh, to work, so okay. it works cleanly. And uh, yeah, I've, I've, the first extensions I was using was from Dentcraft. Have the little cheater bars that come with them on their handles. Yeah. I use those constantly. And uh, yeah, love them. Totally love them. So I'm gonna use this a little bit right now, get a little bit better torque on this thing. Building your extension up to, or down. Yeah, I'm so taking it the, down just a little bit. So we'll put this in here. We'll put this straight up and get the bottom of this a little bit more. But even with one hand, I can get a ton of torque on this on this bar now. Yeah. Just creep right up the center of that thing. That's as far as I can go with that one. Then you kind of go go on the other side. Yeah, we'll, we'll do as much as we can with this tip, and then we'll switch tools and try to get the rest of that center out. You're just roughing the hell out of that real quick. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Don't mess around. You kind of get them out. You can be, yeah, people, people have told me in the past, hey, you're working kind of fast. Well, <laughs> it's just, I can't help it. It's just, yeah. you know, accuracy, you know, smooth is fast, right? Slow, well, it, smooth, it, smooth it, is and fast. It, it, fast comes with experience. I mean, like, yeah. it, it, especially if you're good, you know what I mean? All right, so what are you doing, man? What so now? Doing? Yeah. I'm going to be doing a little... These are my go-to tabs right here. Are these are uh, black plague. Yeah, these green? are black plague green ones, and these are my go-tos, and I love these things. These things are strong. I use, I use the big flat ones, short flat ones. Yeah. I also use uh, Ultra's uh, uh, round tabs, but I have to say I do use the green black plague ones on a regular basis because they pull everything out, and it's all about the flat, smooth surface. Yeah. Everything else just does not stick, and uh, love it. Anyway, so I'm gonna pull this little crease out right here. Oh. Let me start over. No, good, you're good. I got it. Yeah. We're gonna pull that. Give it a little bit of pull. Brought up a little bit. I let it sit too long because it's cold. Yeah, I know. I was gonna say, usually this cold weather makes yeah. it cure quick. Yep. Yeah. So I got into talking too much again. <laughs> so. We'll pull this up. Everything perfect first, right? 
So I'm going to go to a little flatter one. I've pulled on these things so hard, they've got a little curve to them now. Oh gosh, Jeff. Yeah, that's how hard these things you pull. You need a new set, dude. And I've got a whole, I've got a whole <laughs> bunch, trust me. But these things pull ridiculous, I love these things. So we're going to put it over here in this big flat spot. Just let it sit, just a few seconds even, five seconds maybe. Pull. And it's, it's yeah, on you're, there. You're, you're the same way as I do. Like that thing pulls. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't waste a lot of time on nope. when I'm glue pulling. And I'm gonna hear a lot of slack for this. I was gonna say, what glue are you using, dude? Yep. What? So everyone's gonna get mad at me, but I'm using Home Depot clear glue. Hold on, hold that. Home Depot clear. Glue. Home Depot clear glue. <laughs> HD clear. <laughs> <laughs> In our environment here in California, where it's typically around 70, 65, 60 during the winter time, this stuff works amazing. It's not too humid, it's not too dry. This stuff sticks. So let's sit for five seconds and pull it if you can get it off. <laughs> That's a, is that the drawback though? If you let if you let it stay on, it well, it's hard. No, to get it'll off. it'll it'll pop off pretty easily. Yeah. It it can stick really really hard. Yeah. And uh, it depends on what kind of tab you got, but uh, like I said, these black plague flat ones, they they hold really hard depending on what kind of metal you're pulling. Here's another thing too, a lot of guys don't, you pull this up, that looks like a really giant high spot when it's actually not. It's just barely above level. Yeah. So I'm gonna pull around it on both sides, especially through these crease lines and pull the whole area up and that'll give you a lot more integrity. And uh, after, the, after these few pulls and some um, pushes I make through here, I'm gonna be able to start feeling the tension of the metal coming back. Yeah. And that's gonna give me some better pushes and it's going to hold things to start tightening up and put some integrity back in that metal again. And it's important, if you want a tight push, you got to push the tab down. Really, you want to get all the air out of that glue. That's what I do too. Yeah, I push it down hard. Yeah, it pulls hard. They got crease came right out. This is the part that's like watching a flower grow. Oh, no, yeah. Fast motion, National Geographic's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Oh, another quick tool, uh, uh, a tip on, during this whole COVID times and lockdowns and people over ordering stuff, um, if you're having a problem finding alcohol, yeah. go to, um, um, LKQ, and you can buy, they, it's not called alcohol, but it is called Cleaning Release Solution, and it's 94% alcohol, and they got tons of it. What is it called? What is that? What is that? It's Key, key, oh. Keystones. Oh, Keystone. LKQ okay. Keystone, uh -huh. Cleaning Release Solution, and this is your 94% uh, alcohol. So that's wow. where I get my alcohol, and it's cheap, and uh, comes in spray bottles like this. You're good to go. I have to put the, I'll, we'll put that up on the link. Yeah. Like 60 bucks. Charge them up, they last all day. So, I don't need the big ones. I don't think I got that, dude. So, so you got some slimline batteries, is that what you said, dude? Well, they're the Duracells, you know. I got them at Batteries Plus, Batteries, batteries and Bulbs. Uh -huh. You know, only like 55, 60 bucks. It runs your glue gun. Runs my glue gun all day, super hot. It yeah. runs until 6 o'clock. 8, 8 to 5, 8 to 6. Really? Yeah. Deep cycle and it keeps keep going, yeah, huh? Regular, yeah, they're like jet ski batteries almost. Yeah. It's running really good. And I'm still running Cordy because I'm in a shop. <laughs> Jeff's old school. Certain That's right. Go. Keep it running. Yep. I didn't, see how thick my glue is? I didn't push down hard enough on it. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm just saying. Didn't stick. Glue. Now, have you tried any of the new glues, or are you just? Oh, no, I got them. I still use them. Yeah. So when it gets hot and humid, 
Yeah. I'll switch over to a, a, a green. I really like the green. The cactus green. Cactus green. Cactus yeah. green and uh, black and red. Pink yeah. works really well too. Yeah. At least in our environment. But yeah. overall, the when I'm running low, I just go to the Home Depot and get the clear. <laughs> Not getting any wobbles in here yet. So I got a, I got some glue right here. I'm gonna try to pull the center up right here, and then I'll go back and knock these highs down that were created from the impact. I would imagine that this brace probably pushed in just a hair. But not too much. Just maybe, just maybe just enough to give you a little bit of trouble. That was a good call. Switch over to a little sharper tip and knock you on. Try to go for more precision. No, it's it's real stable based on what yeah. I can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and see the tool behind some of this. See what we can get. I'm pushing some of this out. Push this out. Right now, I'm pushing just on the other side of this high spot, pushing right through here. Yeah. Spot, so I'm gonna kind of push everywhere a little bit right now. Yeah. Kind of balancing that dent out. Yep. Yeah. Just to make sure there's not too much pressure locked either way. This lowest spot right here is right where the glue is attached to the brace. Yeah. So I I try to avoid cutting glue out. You'll end up chasing this thing down the down the safety yeah. beam. Yeah. So, but you know you don't. Sometimes you don't have a choice. You, when you glue pull that out, you're going to separate it. Sometimes it'll just unstick itself. You kind of don't really have a choice. You could take the door panel off, and if you, there's access behind this through the door panel, 
If you get a straight shot, you can push the beam back a little bit and they'll bring it bring it out a little bit. It's looking good, dude. It's in good shape, man. Yeah, yeah. PDR, it's not just our job. It's not just a service. It's patience, it's passion, and most of all, it's certainly art. Whether you're just a curious YouTube watcher, PDR technician, or a body man, if you've watched a few videos, you realize PDR has many techniques. Some are slower pushers and some are aggressive pushers. It doesn't matter. It's about the individual way a PDR tech develops their own style as they become more experienced. Take Jeff, for instance. He's fast, real fast. I'm aggressive myself, but one thing I'm taking away from watching Jeff is that he uses tool muscle, meaning less flex in his tools means more drive against the panel. With a PDR master like Jeff, you may find nuggets and add to your own style. PDR truly is amazing and it never gets old watching another PDR tech reversing damage without painting. Love this job. So let's talk about your dent, man. So you, 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 looks like you got a lot of it out already, dude. You got that, just that freaking crown is chomping at the bit. I bet you people yeah. are watching are saying the same so, thing. So yeah, man. I'm gonna spend some, I got some hours to go on pulling all this glue up in that yeah. brace, and then we can knock this crown down. Actually, I need to bring all this up to this level is what almost needs to happen. This needs to come down a little bit, yeah. but this needs to come up more. Yeah. What Jeff is explaining is called pressure releasing. His technique is to pull the side of the dent up, which is the low, while taking tension off the crown, the high spot over here. If he's too aggressive or attacks the crown first without doing as mentioned, he can create micro lows, which will take more time in the end, basically unwanted cleanup. All right, Jeff, I want to say thanks a lot, dude. I know we didn't get through the whole repair, but you're going to send me some photos yeah, and actually absolutely. some video clips yeah, yeah, of it, yeah. right? I mean, we got probably about 75% into the repair. Typically, a dent's like that, then you're, you're going to six to eight hours, you know, if you can get on them nonstop, you know, you might be able to do them a little quicker, but, you know, they take time. Sometimes you need to take a break, you let your head cool down, brain think, at it, think it out a little bit, go back on it, and get some fresh pushes and pulls on it. I, I completely agree. I mean, the, <clears> these repairs aren't as fast as what you would think. PDR tech are not PDR tech. These take a long time. Yep. Well, thanks a lot, Jeff. I yeah, really awesome. appreciate it, man. Anytime. Uh, we look forward to seeing that, which you'll see right now. So talk to you guys later. Cool. Peace see out. You. Okay, everybody. So this is what we got. Yesterday, we filmed the before dent on this door. It's a Ford Ex Expedition. It was pushed in pretty good. Door brace was pushing through. The glue is pushing through. Tons of crowns and high spots and wobbles everywhere. Then it came out super clean. Nice. Really happy with it. Customer's on his way to pick it up. All the lines are straight. Came out really nice. Here's some of the tools I used to finish it off with. I got a 42 inch ultra strong tool, 5 8 thick with replaceable tips. And I've got two uh, aluminum killers from uh, PDR Finesse and a 55 bend 36 inch from Dentcraft orange handle. Nice. Uh, those are my finishing tools. 
You can see these are super sharp. Anyway, that's what we used. Came out awesome.